I don't know. Our story is kind of complicated because I think so much of our marriage story has been like a journey of healing. It was just so fear and shame and guilt based. You know, I think we felt misled. In Canada, Christianity stands as one of the dominant religions, characterized by its diverse branches called denominations. These denominations often differ in their interpretations of the Bible, shaping their distinct practices and beliefs. Caroline and I were raised evangelical, and we were taught to take the Bible literally. And we were in favor of a one true theology. When I look back, I guess I was a fundamentalist. It taught me at a very young age that the only way to be a good Christian was to die for my faith. The scariest part was that there were no other alternatives and I couldn't be myself, I couldn't follow my own passions. And because that was such a big part of who I was, I brought that into our relationship when we started dating in high school. Grew up in, in the Ottawa Valley and grew up Christian. My mom was evangelical, but my dad was Catholic. And then what I felt like was in conflict was in grade three, I realized what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, and it was to become a filmmaker. But then I remember when, when we started dating in high school, I, I guess I started to feel like this desire was incompatible with my faith. During university, I was really worried that your passion for filmmaking was bigger than your passion for the this idea of going overseas and potentially dying. And that didn't work for me. And so I broke up with you and I ran away. And then I gave up filmmaking because maybe it was the problem this whole time. And I feel like our story would have been completely different if we hadn't started asking questions. I think people have a lot of different ideas about what deconstruction is. I think for us, it simply means rethinking the beliefs that we grew up with. I know that when we were starting our deconstruction, it was a very lonely and isolating experience. Well, like the more you ask questions, the more you lose your community. They view you as uncertain, and those are dangerous things to be when you're in the faith. So it was a very isolating experience. There's a lot at stake, and we don't know who's a safe space. We had no idea that other people were talking about this. To discover a podcast like Josiah's. It was just really comforting to know that we weren't alone. Welcome to the Slow Train to Heck podcast about people sharing their stories of deconstruction, leaving behind toxic religious systems, and what happened next. I'm your host, Josiah Mahan. So Slow Train to Hack is a podcast about belief change um, and people going through that. For a lot of people who are going through that, it's very isolating and there's not a lot of places where they are safe to talk about that. And so these kind of stories are not heard. So I wanted to create a place where people in Canada could tell those stories. I grew up uh, oldest son of a pastor of a pretty large church here in Ontario. And there was a lot of pressures that came with that. The general attitude about deconstruction was to be in good standing, a good member of Christian community. You should not be public about your questions. There's so many of us out there that are in authoritarian churches where you can't be your authentic self. You can't ask honest questions. These are kind of like churches that we grew up with. So to discover a podcast like Josiah's was really... We found a community almost. Yeah. This is a story that many people have because it's beyond just a belief system. It's, it, it's a culture because this isn't all of Christianity. We like to think Canada is better. We don't have the problems the Americans have, but that's just not true. And that can cause people questioning those systems to feel even more alone. I think American evangelical culture is very part of the public consciousness. Canada, not quite as much media attention on evangelicalism here. You know, I still feel compelled to the church, but also there's so much hurt. Is there someone who re-examined their faith, but despite that, has decided to stay in the church? I, you know, faith played a huge role my whole life. Like, I grew up in a small town, 
where the church was kind of the central place. Dad was a pastor, my grandparents were pastors, my great-grandparents were pastors. And so faith has always kind of been really central in my life. You know, I was the kid who kind of grew up um, during a lot of the, the purity culture era. You know, that was a period in the 90s where, you know, sexual purity was really the most important thing, right? And I really experienced a lot of pain because of that. I, I realized, you know, I still, you know, I still am a part of this church here, but it was that, that culture that I needed to sort of mentally distance myself from, which, you know, for me meant sort of rethinking a lot of the evangelical teachings that I was, that I was raised with. This was so important to us because rethinking our faith was the key to reconciling our relationship. Two years since we broke up, we reunited and then we got married. And I felt less of a desire to go and die overseas. And I felt more of a desire to do filmmaking again. But I also think it was the key to saving our faith because it let us ask the questions that fundamentalism told us we couldn't ask. Especially in the evangelical culture, you're so much emphasis on what we know and we have to know. You're torn between wanting to be honest and authentic, but certainty is how you do faith, where the more certain you are were of your beliefs, the more celebrated you were. I'm tackling these, these questions and these doubts with sincere honesty and openness to, um, you know, we could be wrong about this. Some of my favorite films are ones that have an element of mystery to them that encourage like questions that they don't have the answer to, that don't come to a conclusion. And to me, that's sort of a faith thing. You can have watched the same movie, have had basically the same experience, but come to a completely different conclusion. One of my favorite filmmakers says like, the best movies aren't the ones that play out in the theater, they play out on the walkway home. These big questions, I think, are just like so human, right? Like yeah. it's like just this human experience of like, why, 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 why? Well, it's like a kid. Like we've been through this mystery of faith, this mystery of marriage, now we have this mystery of parenthood. Raising kids with like the idea that faith is a mystery and that there is a lot of unanswered questions, that there is a lot of things that we're just not going to know in this lifetime. Asking God questions and struggling with the world. If, you're, if we're his children and he's our father, it's the most perfectly natural thing to have happen. So if questions are bad and dangerous and evil, what kind of father do you have? Dwayne Parsons was my former pastor for like 10 years, and he was the guy that I always considered to be a safe space to have very challenging conversations with. And I guess it's weird because it's only now I'm realizing what it is that fosters these safe spaces to ask these questions. These are like the deepest, some of the deepest questions that we ask as people is like, is God real? Or is there life after death? Wow, people are mortal and time is finite and what's going to happen? You know, a family, a church, a relationship can be an incredibly liberating place to work through those things. And at the end of the day, if you can communicate to someone that you're going to love them regardless, how much more can you can communicate the love of God than to say, you actually are more important to me than the label you have, the faith that you have, and I'm going to put your well-being first and foremost. Mm -hmm.